Hello guys, myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. Uh, today I have brought to you 10 questions which can be of use for your RBS EBI and ABAD exams. So let's begin today's class. I hope all of you are aware of the live classes for RBS EBI and ABAD and our mobile application. So let's begin with the very first question without wasting any time. So, so the very first question is for the first time all the 23 IITs of the countries will organize a mega research and development fair named Inventive on October 14, 15, 2022. Which IIT will host the fair? So here, guys, IIT Delhi is the right answer. So it is a very easy news, I would say, because a mega research and development fair, an exhibition uh, would be created or you can say organized by the IIT Delhi and the name of that uh, event would be Inventive. Now, there is no theme of this event therefore it is a relaxation for all of you that now you don't have to learn the theme now here the purpose of this here is mentioned that it aims to promote the innovation led growth and development of affordable technologies in line with the government flagship initiatives like make in india and digital india so that is a very basic uh, you can say concept of the event and you don't have to memorize it of course so what you have to memorize here only three words are important first is the name of the organization which is hosting this event second is the name of the event and third is that 23 iits are there in india in total okay the next question that we have is recently the central government has set a new target of 40 percent reduction in particulate matter concentration in cities covered under the national clean air program by 2026 what was the earlier target so as you can see from the picture, the right answer here is option A, 20, 30, 20 to 30% 30 reduction by 2024 was sought under the National Clean Air Program. Now this reduction, this target has been increased to 40% by 2026. However, we have also extended the, the timeline as well. So this is the news exactly okay this much is the news now related to the national clean air program i hope all of you are aware that it was launched in 2018 in order to reduce the pollution levels the particulate matter in different cities and you must be aware of this fact that india comes whenever we talk about pollution air pollution then india is the country which has the maximum number of cities in uh, different indices which are released by different organizations in relation to the pollution levels okay so according to the united uh, union environment ministry 95 of the 131 non-attainment cities covered under the national um, uh, national clean air program have witnessed an overall improvement in pm10 levels in 2021 as compared to 2017 levels so it is not like the improvement is not happening improvement is happening but it's like we need to uh, focus more on the efforts and you know we need to accelerate the efforts so that we can achieve uh, our goals in the time uh, time frame the third question is which edition of the Fikki Skill Summit was organized in New Delhi? So here guys, 13th edition of the Fikki Skill Summit was organized and it has a theme. So the theme is education to employability making it happen. So this is the theme of this summit. Now this summit would look from the national education policies perspective. Basically the basic idea of this skill is this summit is to fulfill the vision of India of becoming the skill capital of the world okay in line with the un's sustainable development goal for which aims to ensure the quality education for all by the year 2030 so that is all about this news there is nothing much that you need to focus on just the uh, edition the summit and its theme and also the sustainable development goal sdg4 and as far as the sdgs are concerned in my opinion you should be aware of all the 17 sdgs which are there with, because it is a part of your economics uh, and social issues as well now the fourth question is which state celebrates the batukamba festival so guys it is a flower festival celebrated in telangana it is uh, celebrated mainly in Telangana, but some parts of Andhra Pradesh also celebrate the Batukhamma festival. So it is 
like this okay so from the flowers these pots are prepared and the it is mainly a women's festival so all the festivities are organized by the women only now as far as the festival is concerned so it is celebrated in either september or october uh, because it is based on the satvahana ca calendar so this is again an important fact regarding this Batukamba festival because this is a very important festival in the state of Telangana and whenever the state festivals are concerned many students tend to neglect them but in my opinion you should not neglect those state festivals the questions on them have been asked in the examination okay so this is also celebrate, uh, celebrated in, the par in parts of Andhra Pradesh and it is a nine day festival in Telugu, Batukamma means Mother Goddess come alive. Okay, so that is the meaning of Batukamma. The fifth question of the day is which state has become the first state in India to start an encyclopedia on tribal communities to document their age old and unique traditions? So it is a really unique initiative undertaken by a state. So which state is it? It is guys Odisha. So Odisha has become the first state in India to start an encyclopedia on tribal communities and what, what would be the purpose of this encyclopedia to uh, document the traditions of the tribes. So as per the 2011 census, 22.85% of Odisha's total population was uh, constituted of tribal people. Their number as a percentage of total population are higher in Jharkhand and Chhattisgarh. So these areas are very prominent for the tribal population we have a total of 62 tribes in the state of odisha only and that makes odisha the most diverse the state with most diverse tribal communities in the country the sixth question is president of india shrimati draupadi murmu has inaugurated the integrated cryogenic engine manufacturing facility of hindustan aeronautics limited in dash so guys, this facility has been uh, situated uh, in Bangalore. Okay, so Bangalore is the, uh, you can say headquarters of this facility and it is also the headquarter of the Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. That is why this facility is there. Apart from this, she has also laid the foundation stone for the Zonal Institute of Virology, which is again in the southern zone of Bangalore. That is not a very important news. The important news is this facility. Coming to the next question, which company will set up the first ever Carl Gustav uh, M4 weapon systems manufacturing facility in India? So here, SAP is the right answer. Now, this is a Swedish company, okay, Sweden based company, which is going to set up the manufacturing facility for this weapon. This is guys the M4 weapon and it is uh, basically the weapon that is carried on the shoulder and from then there it is shot okay so that is uh, the functioning of this weapon now in india the very first manufacturing facility of this weapon will be established by this organization only and this facility would be the first ever facility of this organization outside sweden okay so that is the unique point of this news entirely the next question is which company is the manufacturer of loitering munition so here Tata Group is the right answer. So Tata Advanced System uh, Limited has demonstrated or you can say has developed this uh, loitering munition and it has conducted the testing of this munition as well in Pokhran range in Rajasthan. So the other name of this munition is ALS-50. So this is also important. Do remember the name. The next question is what is the corpus of financial assistance announced by the Asian Development Bank to tackle the food security crisis in the Asia Pacific region. So here 14 billion is the right answer. So Asian Development Bank has announced the dollar 14 billion fund to tackle the food security crisis in Asia Pacific region. So you must have heard about the climate change. You must have heard about the Russia Ukraine war. Okay, so these are the very given situations. Because of these situations, many countries in the Asia Pacific region are struggling with the acute shortage of food, which may lead to the uh, you can say food shortages or towards starvation. Okay, and many people may die because of that. And in order to prevent that situation, Asian Development Bank has allocated 14 billion dollars for tackling the food crisis challenge. Now, how will the ADB going, 
use this fund so it is going to provide the funding to the countries the governments of the countries and then the government can utilize that funding received from the adb to provide food to the needy people so that is how this funds uh, this fund will be used okay so the tenure of this fund would be 2022 to 2025 okay and this was announced at the 55th annual meeting of the Asian Development Bank, which was held at its headquarters in Manila. Now, how many countries are members of the ADP? That is your question. Do tell me in the comment section below. Now, uh, coming to the need of this funding. So, nearly 1.1 billion people lack healthy diets due to poverty and food prices in Asia and the Pacific, which have soared to record highs this year because of climate change as well as the Russia-Ukraine war. Uh, USD 3.3 billion of the total funding will be used in 2022 and the rest 10.4 billion will be used in the coming years. Now the last question of the day is who is the author of Wildlife India at, uh, at 50 saving the wild securing the future book. So what is the right answer Manoj Kumar Mishra is the right answer here. This is his book and this is the so here guys this video was short and crisp i hope you have liked the video thank you so much for watching it if you have any feedbacks anything to discuss with me you can mention it in the comment section below thank you so much for watching the video